chapters four and five, we'll be looking at needs assessment. Chapter four specifically, we'll be looking at theoretical considerations. And so we'll talk about what's meant by the, chap the term need and why it's important to be precise when using the term, how the term need has been defined historically, the importance of incorporating both qualitative and quantitative dimensions into the definition of need, how the definition of need can change depending on factors used in defining it, how different perspectives can change the definition of need, why it's important to be cautious in identifying at-risk groups, why it's important to seek out supporting data, but also to verify the reliability of data sources. And so some of the topics we'll look at, as we said, the concept of need, theoretical understandings of need, needs assessment in the planning process, factors influencing the definition of need and the different perspectives there, and two major problems, the reliability and availability of data. So looking at the concept of need itself, um, we evaluate existing conditions against societally established standards. If the community is at or above those standards, there is no need. If the community is below those standards, there is need. And so this is one of the critical issues or critical tasks that we, do, that we see. It's defining standards, which are often vague, elusive, and changing. So um, if you're familiar with research, trying to find ways to operationalize that. And again, it can be kind of hard when we're talking about a concept like need. Um, so when we look at Ponsion in terms of the theoretical understanding of need, the whole idea here is that, this, that society's first responsibility is to meet the basic survival needs of its members, so biological, social, emotional, and spiritual. Need is relative, and planning focuses on distribution and redistribution. When we think about need from Maslow's perspective, we look at need as being hierarchical, um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, only when the more basic needs are satisfied, so physiological needs, survival, food, shelter, can higher needs like safety, security, belonging be attended to. Achievement of the second level of need allows attention to higher levels of need like love and self-actualization. Um, again, just kind of looking at these two defini definitions here. Um, again, we already said Ponsion, looking at the minimum standard or level defined by the community below which no one should fall. And so again, we can see these various needs that are listed there. Um, and then with Maslow, this isn't presented as the pyramid or the triangle that we often see here on this image, um, but lower level needs must be satisfied before higher levels can be addressed. Uh, as we said, needs often a really vague concept. It can be buried in phrases so global that it has little value for placing boundaries on the planning task. It can be employed so narrowly that specific services are mandated and analysis is unnecessary. Despite being frequently cited in planning, need is rarely operationalized. You heard me use that word earlier, but it's really just coming up with what is the measurable definition. And depending on who you ask, it could vary greatly. And so that's where it's very important for us to consider the evidence that is there to defining need and to clearly stating and defining what that is, um, especially as it relates to our program planning. Needs-based planning is possible and necessary for the design and implementation of effective human services. Um, problems must be translated into needs that will be addressed through the planning process. Need is not only difficult to define as a concept, but once defined, difficult to measure. Title 20 amendments to the Social Security Act um, related to needs assessment and the planning process required each state as a condition of the receipt of federal funds to initiate a planning process that includes the assessment of need as the beginning point. Defined a need as any identifiable condition which limits a person or a family member in meeting his or her full potential and asserted that need has both qualitative and quantitative dimensions. So understanding need requires defining the need with specific emphasis on the complexity of need as a planning concept, examining factors influencing need, exploring categories of need, and recognizing problems with reliability and validity of data used to determine need. Um, we also see factors that influence this definition. The recognition that need is elastic and relative, recognition that demand is elastic and often increases with increased service provision, Recognition that elasticity is influenced by social, political, and economic factors such as standard of living, socio-political environment, availability of resources, and technology influence. So we'll go through each of these different perspectives on need. We, here in this text, define four distinct approaches to the measurement of need, normative, perceived, expressed, and relative. 
So norm normative need implies the existence of standards or norms focuses on existing data and does not involve collection of new information. So surveys from comparable communities, opinions from knowledgeable professionals, um, existing data suggests targets for comparison. If the ratio falls short of a particular standard, a need is said to exist. And you can probably think of some various examples um, in the social services. Normative need. Um, the strength of this approach is that objective targets can be generated. But one of the limitations of this approach is that need levels are likely to change as knowledge, technology, and values change. And so again, it can be a positive, um, objective way to define need. Uh, but as it says, you know, we do see this as an ever-changing target. Okay, perceived need. This focuses on what people think their needs are or feel their needs to be. Requires asking consumers what they perceive as their needs. It requires balancing professional judgments of client needs and potential consumers' perceptions of what those needs are. So the great strength of this approach is that need perceived by the potential consumer provides information that's very useful in designing a more responsive service delivery system. But um, of course, there are limitations to this approach too. The standard changes with each respondent, so there's a lot of um, relativity or subjective subjectivity to this piece. Um, and also actively soliciting consumers' perceptions leaves the impression that those needs will be met and can alienate potential consumers if services are not provided. And we've probably all felt this way, um, just even if you think about the political spectrum and voting for someone and expecting you know, specific promises to be met and they're not. <laughs> That's how the consumer can also feel in, related, in relation to social service programs. Express need. This focuses on whether individuals actually attempt to obtain service. And so this relies on demand statistics. How many individuals are successful in receiving services? So the need is met or the demand. How many individuals are unsuccessful in receiving services? So again, we see that needs and demands are unmet. One of the strengths of this approach is that it focuses on situations where individuals translate feelings into action. So an unmet need can become the basis for planning. Um, but one of the limitations of this approach is that it does not target overall community need, but only the tip of the iceberg. Okay, um, and then finally, as we look at relative need, this measures the gap between the level of services existing in one community and those existing in similar communities or geographic areas. This focuses on equity. Um, and so again, these four different perspectives on need, this is really helpful because again, you can compare quite easily um, using table 4.1. Um, I won't go through the definitions, but again, just various examples. Normative need, an example, the, the number of people in a community who live in substandard housing as defined by federal housing standards. And we, the federal government has standards for a lot of different aspects, um, the poverty line or poverty level, et cetera, people qualifying for specific resources. Um, the perceived need, the number of people in a community who define themselves in a survey as being in poor health. Express need, the number of people in a community who are on waiting lists to receive family counseling. Um, an example for relative need, the percentage of homeless people placed in shelters in community X compared to the percentage in community Y. So need categories and how they relate to the planning process. Need cannot be adequately measured by selecting only one approach. Um, and we mentioned those four approaches earlier. Multiple approaches to the needs assessment process feeds a well-organized and pertinent flow of information into the overall management decision process. It can show what the actual demand on human service agencies is and what potential demand might be. It can provide useful information as long-term goals and capital budget programs are reviewed. It can provide a useful early warning system regarding potential changes in demand. Once key data sources are identified and data collection systems are organized, all four perspectives on need can be incorporated in a low cost and efficient manner. Um, another thing to think about is determining who is in need and what to see here. Um, concept of at-risk populations is fundamental to needs assessment. And needs assessment requires establishing standards of need and devising methodologies for counting the number of people in a given community who fall below that standard. Um, two major problems that we see, the reliability and availability of data. Um, so current methods are useful only for deriving estimates and decision makers often prefer greater precision. Um, and then data avail availability, 
Program planners must accept these limitations and use existing and imperfect data sources to generate targets, identify surrogate measures of need, um, a theoretical requirement, and develop the best possible argument that surrogate measures are valid, and that's oftentimes a political argument.